All right, so let's get started here. Uh, Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We're happy to welcome you to Ryerson and welcome you to the Service Hub. Uh, we're gonna learn a little bit more about what we do and, and some of the tools that you'll be using for this fall. Before we begin, we would like to do a land acknowledgement. So this land acknowledgement is really important to understand the history that has brought us to reside on this land. Canada's colonial history is ongoing as we are reminded with the recent discovery of the buried remains of hundreds of children at former residential schools across Canada. These recent announcements are a stark reminder of our responsibility to learn more about our history and the profound intergenerational effects of residential schools across Canada. As an institution, we are committed to following the work of the Standing Strong Task Force here at the university, as it works to provide our community with recommendations to reconcile the legacy of Egerton Ryerson. Co-chaired by the university's elder and senior advisor on Indigenous relations and reconciliation, the task force aims to provide their final recommendations regarding principles of commemoration, the university's name, and other elements of commemoration on campus before the fall semester. With that being said, I will continue with our land acknowledgement. Toronto is in the dish with one spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. We are humbled to be guests here, and we wish to acknowledge and appreciate the ways in which we benefit from living on land that is the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples. Further, we are dedicated to doing good anti-colonial work in the spirit of peace, respect, and reconciliation. So as we begin, I would like to point out that we did have a previous webinar that happened last month, uh, which covered actually a lot of great information that's really helpful to know for our newly admitted students. Uh, the webinar today kind of tends to build on some of the subjects that we started in this previous one. So I would like to mention that it is available. Um, it should be on our website within, within the next couple of days. So if you have a chance, I recommend that you head to ryerson.ca slash service hub slash webinars. And within the next couple of days, you should see it available there. Uh, that previous webinar covered a little bit about how classes are being offered, navigating the undergraduate calendar, how to selecting liberal studies classes, applying for transfer credits, setting up your email address, information about awards and scholarships and applying for OSAP, details on accessing your RESP funding, applying for your one card and orientation activities. So you can see that's a lot of good topics that you might be interested in. Um, and we, we're not going to be covering those in as much detail today. As I said, we're kind of building on that previous webinar. So if you are looking for more information and more details on those topics, I please recommend that you check out the Service Hub webinar webpage over the next couple of days and you can get yourself caught up. So the learning objectives for today uh, that we will be covering. First of all, we're just going to briefly talk about what is the Service Hub and what it is that we do. We're going to talk about how to navigate your RAMS account, which is going to become very important as you're a student here. We'll get into some detail on adding and dropping classes and the different tools and supports you can use for that. How to view your schedule and what a schedule is going to look like. Managing and reading your fees account. So this is something that will come into play uh, as your tuition charges are posted, you've got payments coming in. This is going to be an important step for you to learn really how to manage that. We will also cover navigating the D2L platform in a very simple way, just to kind of briefly go over what that D2L platform is going to look like um, and how you can sort of access your online course materials for the year. Finally, we will give you information on getting in touch with your program department. Uh, these are going to be a good resource for you throughout your time at Ryerson. 
So in terms of the service hub, what is it that we actually do? So we're part of the registrar's office. Um, we're, as, as the name says, we are a hub for all different areas. Uh, we handle questions about undergraduate admissions. Um, we don't do as much for engineering and law programs because they do have their own admissions office. Uh, we will help with Chang School enrollment. So as an undergraduate student, uh, you may wish to enroll for Chang School classes. They offer normally evening and online classes as an option for students who are looking for a more flexible schedule. Uh, we help with enrollment for those classes. We can help you with any questions you have about your fees account, uh, RAMS assistance. So if you're really navigating anything on RAMS and you need help with it, uh, we're certainly the first place to check. We also produce proof of enrollment letters. We'll get into that process a little bit more as well. Uh, this is a letter that students often use to verify their enrollment in order to access their RESP funding or another source of funding. Um, there are various reasons you may need proof that you're enrolled and we will produce that letter. And we also handle inquiries about financial assistance and OSAP. We work closely with the financial aid team here at Ryerson, and we're your first point of contact for any questions or concerns you might have about that financial aid process. Now we'll get into the RAMS navigation process. So when you log in, you're gonna to go to my.ryerson.ca and select the tab for RAMS, that's R-A-M-S-S, -S, it's all in capitals. And when you select that tab, it's gonna try and open up in a new window. So you have to make sure you turn off your pop-up blocker to get it to show. And you're going to see this lovely screen right here, which gives you quite a few different options. So you may be wondering what exactly is RAMS? RAMS is your administrative self-service. So it covers a lot of different areas of your time here at Ryerson and all the sort of administrative issues that you may come across can normally be looked at on RAMS. So the student center is the first option that actually contains all the different areas of RAMS in one place. So you can select that to see the full suite of options available to you as a student, including your schedule, your account balance, contact information and more. So that student center just basically has all the other categories combined onto one page. When you go into manage classes, this is where you'll be able to see your enrollment dates. You can search for classes. You'll be able to add, drop or swap classes from here. Check your shopping cart, check your weekly schedule and everything to do with management of your classes. Under academics, you have the option to look at your grades and standing view your unofficial transcript or request that official transcript. If you need to provide an official transcript for some reason, this is where that request is done. You can also request a letter. So this is what we touched on before. If you're a newly admitted student, you may have RESP funding that you're looking to access um, or another source of funding, a scholarship or um, anything that requires you to provide proof that you're enrolled, we would ask you to log on to RAMS and request that letter uh, by July 23rd, if possible. So after this date, you can still request the letter, but there's kind of a turning point on our RAMS system. And after July 23rd, letters can actually only be produced after your courses are enrolled in August. So where possible, we recommend that you please request that letter as soon as possible. Um, and we can produce that for you once you have met the conditions on your offer of admission. Um, and that will confirm that you're joining us for studies in the fall. The next section we can look at is financial aid. So in the financial aid section of RAMS, you can view the details of the scholarships, awards and bursaries that have been issued to you by Ryerson and when the funds are expected to be deposited into your RAMS account. Uh, please note that this section does not include information on your OSAP loan. If you've applied for OSAP and are looking for more details or information there, you would have to log in to your OSAP portal, which is a little bit separate from this. Under the communications section, it shows a list of all the different communications sent through the registrar's office. So this could be from admissions, student records, or curriculum advising. Uh, this, this section shows your offer of admission and any scholarship confirmation that you've had. 
If you've been using the Choose Ryerson portal over the last few months uh, and you click on your communication section, it actually redirects you right here. So this is where you can find all of those documents that you receive throughout your time applying um, and any further documentation you receive as your with your time as a student. Another area we'll get into a little bit more detail about is the financial account. Uh, so you can do an account inquiry, we could allow you to check all the charges and payments and everything going on in your account. You can check your charges due, your payment history. Uh, if you've paid extra money to your student account and you would like to request a refund for that, uh, this is where you would go about it. They also provide account statements, a net tuition statement, as well as tax forms. So you can see at the bottom there, it says T2202 and T4A inquiry. Uh, those are the tax slips that you will need in order to file your taxes. Um, and you can locate them right there on the RAMS account. I'd like to give a little bit of information here on how to actually add classes on RAMS. The first place we're going to look is the enrollment support webpage, which is a great support for you as a student. Uh, we've got the link down below and you can see it covers everything to do with course enrollment. So you can look at enrollment dates, how to change your schedule, things to consider after enrollment and help and resources. So if you continue to scroll down, you can see it shows the enrollment dates right here. As first year students, you will be registering starting August 10th at 6 a.m. That's when that opens up for you. And it does give you instructions on changing your course schedule using the visual schedule builder, how exactly it is to search for classes, enroll, drop, or swap classes. These are step-by-step -step instructions that you can use. It talks about continuing education courses, course wait lists, and transfer credits. Um, and then some things to consider, like confirming your schedule, applying for OSAP, paying your fees, and being aware of your course drop deadlines. So that sometimes comes up a little later in the term if you find you have to drop a class. It's important you're checking your deadlines ahead of time. Uh, so because, as it says on the website here, enrollment doesn't start until August 10th for you, um, part of this webinar may have slipped your mind or you may have forgotten. This is why we would strongly encourage you to check out that enrollment support website because that's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on everything that you need. The first thing we will look at is how to actually just add an individual class on RAMS. This is sort of the most basic step you can take when it comes to the enrollment process. So again, under Manage Classes, you go to the tab that says Add Classes. You're going to select the term and hit Continue. Now in this example, a student already has some classes in their shopping cart. So you can see that on the right hand side. Uh, you may not have that necessarily in your first time enrolling. What you're going to want to do is select the option for class search, which is on the left hand side with the blue dot, and then go ahead and search. Now in this example, we will use the course code ACC100. So under the first little box there where you're filling in information, you just wanna put the letter portion of the course code. Beneath it, you wanna put the number portion of the course code. And you want to indicate that you're looking for open classes only. This may automatically be checked off because it's only showing you classes that are actually available to enroll in. If you uncheck that, it will show you also closed sections of the class that are no longer available. And then you'll go ahead and search and you're going to get a result that's something like this. So you can see for ACC 100 for this particular term, uh, there are four different sections available. So normally that will show different dates and different times. So you can decide which works best for you in your schedule. In this example, we'll say the third one works best for us. You can also check the instructor. Um, you may have a favorite instructor as you become you know, longer term students here at Ryerson. And maybe that will be a deciding factor for you as well but you can go ahead and just select the class you're interested in. It's gonna give you those class details. So you can just confirm that everything is correct based on what you selected and you'll hit next. And this is an important part. It says ACC 100 has been added to your shopping cart, but note that you are not yet enrolled. Proceed to step two if you would like to secure your seat in the class. So from here, you can go ahead and pro proceed to the next step and enroll for the class or if you wanted to add a few more classes into your shopping cart before you go ahead and enroll, you can go back to that class search option again. 
So assuming that this is the only class we were looking to add, we're gonna go ahead and proceed. And you can see here, once again, it's just gonna list out the classes. If you had multiple classes in your cart, it would list them all here. And you have to proceed to that final step. And you're looking for that green check mark that says success, you are enrolled in the class, it has been added to your schedule. So that's just the very basic way of searching if you know the course code you're looking for. The other way of searching for classes is using the My Classes Offered function. So again, that's on RAMS under Manage Classes, Add Classes, you select your term. And this time, instead of selecting Class Search, you can select My Classes Offered. And go ahead and search. Now this is going to show uh, your entire degree, basically, all the courses that you need from first year all the way through to fourth year, um, which courses are required. It will also show you which have been taken. So if you're in a later term, it will show that green check mark for courses that have already been completed. Courses that are in progress, so maybe you've enrolled but haven't gotten a grade yet, uh, that will show as that yellow diamond shape. And any planned courses for future terms will be in with a blue star. So as you scroll down, you can expand the different categories and see um, that certain courses are satisfied or not satisfied. So we can see that we need a course uh, from, or we need these courses that are just below. These are the required courses for the class. And again, you can see that it shows if the course is in progress. So that first section, they've all got that yellow diamond, which means those classes are already enrolled. They should already be on your schedule and those are in progress. And then just beneath, you can see it shows uh, this particular program requires a table one humanities requirement. And it says the following courses may satisfy that requirement. So you know, you can choose a course from this list. This list is generated based on the classes that are actually being offered for the term. Um, so you can have a look through. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you're checking the bottom there where it says it's showing one of 10 of a potential 53 classes. So this is not all the classes that are being offered. You'll want to scroll through or select view all to make sure you're getting all of those available options. And then when you click the course title itself, it'll take you right through that enrollment process that we just covered. So this is a nice way of ensuring that the classes that you're selecting are part of the requirements for your class, they are being offered for the term, um, and it just kind of simplifies the process for you a little bit. The next thing you may need to know is how to drop classes on RAMS. Um, so this, again, sometimes comes up throughout the term, um, sometimes even right at the beginning of the term, you find a different class you're more interested in has become available, um, or you need to switch something for another time. You can always drop the class through the RAMS account as long as it's before the deadlines that we have posted. So once again, you go to the drop classes option, select the term and continue. And now it's going to show you a list of all the courses that you're already enrolled in. So we know we just did that enrollment for ACC 100. Uh, I'm going to select that class using the little check mark on the left-hand side, because that's the one that I want to drop. So I check off the class and select drop. Now this little message comes up when you attempt to drop a class. It may not look so important. It looks like, uh, you know, just a small little box of writing in that yellow font. Um, but it's actually really, really important that you read this warning before dropping the class. Uh, this basically lets you know that you must review the applicable course drop deadlines and the refund deadlines before dropping the class. Uh, this applies differently to undergraduate classes versus Chang School classes. Uh, depending on your program type, they have different deadlines. Uh, so it's very important that you do go ahead and check those relevant deadlines before you make that drop. We don't want any nasty surprises after you drop the class if you find out that you weren't eligible for the refund that you thought you were or something along those lines. So this little warning is just that reminder to you to double check that before you proceed. It'll then show the class again and you can go ahead and finish dropping. You can see right now it's still got that little check mark that shows that it's enrolled. What you want to do is finish dropping and it will give you that status. So it says success, this class has been removed from your schedule. So that's what you're looking for is that final confirmation screen if you have to do a drop.
So speaking of those drop deadlines, uh, this is something we wanted to inform you about. Um, before you go ahead and enroll for classes, you'll notice that um, undergraduate students do have the option of taking continuing education classes through the Chang School of Continuing Education. Um, these are the same as your regular degree credit classes, but because they're offered through the Chang School, uh, you can likely take it in the evening or online. They have some flexible options there. And you'll notice the difference between an undergrad and a Cheng School course because the Cheng School course will have an additional letter C on the beginning of the course code. So in our example, we were looking at ACC 100. If you were to look up CACC 100, that would show you the Cheng School option. So you're welcome to enroll for Cheng School classes, but it's really important that you're checking the right deadline dates. So in this example, if you're a full-time undergraduate student and you're taking a regular undergraduate class, you should be looking at the undergraduate calendar for the important dates and drop deadlines. If you're a full-time undergraduate student taking a Chang School class, you must consult the Chang School website for their important dates and deadlines. Um, this can be a little bit tricky. It's new information for a lot of students and it can result in you getting unexpected late drop fees if you're not checking the right dates. So it's really important that you do check that website. For those of you who have been entered into a part-time program, you will consult the undergraduate calendar, no matter if you're taking an undergraduate or a Chang School class. So it's a little bit confusing at first to learn the differences between them. Um, but as long as you're doing your, your research, you can always contact the service hub if you're ever unsure, um, and we can let you know the right dates to check. Now, there's a fantastic tool for enrollment that I would really like to encourage you to try out. It's called Visual Schedule Builder. It's also available through your RAMS account. So it's an online self-service tool that enables you to effectively and effortlessly create your optimal class schedule. So you can filter and search for classes. You can actually physically drag and drop classes into your schedule. You can pin certain classes as preferred and have other classes work around it. You can block off time slots if you have maybe a part-time job or another commitment that you have to accommodate. And you can look at multiple variations of the schedule and choose the one that fits the best. You can, and then also you can process all of the class enrollment changes at one time. So our RAMS support website, which is also a great resource, has again, step-by-step -step how to videos on how to use this visual schedule builder. Uh, so please do visit the RAMS support website for more information on that. And we're just going to watch a couple quick videos um, just to give you a sense of what visual schedule builder looks like and how you can navigate. In the search bar, you can search by course code, course title, or instructor. Let's search for a course by course code. I need MKT 100 this term, so I will enter that code into the Select Courses field and hit Enter. You can see that it populates automatically and is included in the generated schedule results. I can toggle this course on and off to see how it affects my schedule using the checkbox beside the course. This feature lets me play around with different potential schedules. If I decide later that I don't want one of these courses, I can simply remove it by clicking the X in the right-hand corner. Okay, and sorry, this video was intended to play first. Uh, this will just show you how to actually um, get started and how to find the Visual Schedule Builder. To get started using Visual Schedule Builder, access your Student Center in RAMS via my.ryerson.ca. Click the Visual Schedule Builder link below your weekly schedule. Visual Schedule Builder will open in a new window. Once you select your enrollment term, any undergraduate or Chang School of Continuing Education classes you're currently enrolled in will automatically display on both sides of the page. This format displays on the left-hand side of the screen and the weekly grid on the right side. Any classes that have an associated lab or tutorial will also display. So you can see that's a really convenient, nice format for you where you can visually lay out your schedule, um, play around with different variations of that and sort of work to find the schedule that fits the best for you. 
Um, so if you reference back to the, the RAMP support website that we mentioned here for Visual Schedule Builder, you can get instructions all the way through to the enrollment process. So we do recommend that you check that out um, ahead of enrolling for classes starting on August 10th for new first year students. Now, once you've enrolled for your classes and you've got your schedule kind of worked out, you probably are going to want to view it and see exactly what it looks like. So what you can do is go again to RAMS and go to manage classes. And then on the left-hand panel, you're going to select my weekly schedule. So there are two different ways that your classes may display on this schedule, depending on the type of class that it is. So Ryerson offers synchronous classes which are classes that meet at the same time every week. Um, it'll be scheduled for a set time of day and it will be on the same day. In the case that your class is a synchronous class, it's going to show in a grid just like this, where you can see the time of the class running down the left-hand side. And along the top, you can see the actual day of the week. The next type of class you may have is an asynchronous class. Uh, this means that the class is not offered necessarily at a specific time. This sometimes happens when we have online classes, is that you can actually log in um, any day of the week that fits your schedule, and it's a more self-paced learning style. Um, of course, with maybe assignments due on certain days or things like that. But if your class has no set meeting times, it's considered asynchronous and it will actually show just underneath that grid of dates and times. Uh, you can see the second red arrow there shows a class enrolled, but it's not actually showing it on that time grid because there's no specific time that you have to attend. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you have the correct week selected on that um, schedule format. So sometimes if you log on in August, say, and you're trying to look for your schedule, but nothing's showing up, that's because your classes haven't started yet. And it's probably showing you for the current week that you're in. Um, so you can always skip ahead or skip back to previous week or next week uh, to make sure that you're looking at the right time frame when you're looking at that schedule. We would also like to cover how to view your fees account. So this is gonna become increasingly important uh, as we approach the school year and your fees are going to be due. You can check how much your fees are, when they are due, due dates and things like that. And we're going to get into a little bit more detail about the account inquiry process. So when you select account inquiry, again, you wanna select the relevant term and just cl click it right on that little arrow and you're gonna see something like this. So it looks like a lot of information all at once, um, but we'll go through step-by-step step to kind of show what these different items are showing and help you get a little bit more comfortable with that. Right up at the top, you can see debits and credits. So in this case, a debit is something that is being charged to you from the university. So this is your ancillary and tuition fees. A debit is a charge. Credits equals how much you have paid towards the account. So that could be a credit that you've paid from your bank account, could be from a student loan or scholarship or bursary payment, but any money that's coming in to credit the account will show as credits. You can see that this person has equal debits to credits, which means they've paid up their balance. The first column that you'll see shows the different types of charges that you are being charged as a student here. Um, so it's going to show your tuition payments uh, or your tuition charges, your ancillary fees. It will also show any payments coming in. You can see this student had some student loan payments and a student access guarantee come in. It's going to show you the term that it's referring to. So if you have a payment that was left over maybe from last term, it'll actually show you when that, when that payment came in or a charge maybe that's left over from a previous term that you didn't have paid off. It's going to just help you to clarify exactly when that charge was applied. And then you see the, the column that has the actual number. So if we're looking at this example here, closer down to the bottom, second from the bottom, you can see the largest charge here was for tuition. So that makes sense. That's gonna be a fairly large charge on the account. There's other smaller fees that are the ancillary fees that are uh, part of the fees you pay as a student for all the services and supports that are available on campus. And you'll notice that anything that has a charge is showing as a positive number. 
when we get to the top of the column, you can see that there are negative numbers here. So when you're looking at your account, a negative number means money coming in, it means payment and that kind of thing. So there was a few student loan payments and uh, grants applied. So you can just always double check how much exactly came into your account and then also um, when it came in. So the final column will show the exact date that the charge or payment was posted. So sometimes if you've applied for OSAP and you're not sure if it's come in yet, this is a fantastic place to check. It'll show you if the payment came in, how much it was for, and what exact date it came in. Just one quick note about financial aid payments. You may notice that it's split into multiple like chunks of a payment, which is the case for this account as well. You can see there's a couple payments from Canada Student Loans. Um, that's because your OSAP loan will come from various different sources. Uh, so sometimes it comes in in multiple installments. So if you only see maybe part of your fees paid, but you were expecting more from OSAP, you can normally just give it a little bit of time. You'll probably see that next payment coming in soon. You can always cross-reference this account inquiry uh, with your OSAP account if you've applied or your other financial aid account, just to confirm that you've received what you expected to. Now we are going to cover the D2L navigation. So this will come into play uh, probably around the end of August and early September once your instructor has added your courses to D2L. So they will get a list of students who are in the class and they will put that course content up online normally just before the start of classes. So when you log in to my.ryerson.ca, uh, we're going to go to online courses and organizations. Before we were always in the RAMS tab, which is just to the right, but now we're going to click that online courses and this will show the actual classes that you're registered in. So if you have a look, this student is enrolled in a couple different classes. It's just gonna give those little icons that show all the different courses. If you have say five online classes for the fall term, you should be able to see all five of those by the time that class starts. And you can just click on the course code itself in order to get more information. So we can click on CMN 279 as an example. And this is kind of just the, the traditional starting page that you're going to see. Um, the announcements will be first. So you'll probably get a welcome message from your instructor. In this case, uh, this was an end of term reminder because the screenshot was taken from closer to the end of the term. Um, but any relevant and important updates will be posted on that announcement screen right as soon as you get to the page. The next place you'll look is under content. So that is going to have your course modules, um, any content, slideshows, lectures, um, course readings, things like that. So all of the sort of content uh, that's required for your class will be housed there. The next part is grades. So if you've got assignments that you've submitted previously and you wanna check on your progress, maybe you received an announcement that grades have been posted, you should be able to see them under the grades tab of D2L. Under assessment, uh, this is where you may have to submit certain documents. So under the content tab, maybe you saw an assignment that you're supposed to work on and you have to submit it by a certain date. You'll go into the assessment tab to actually submit that documentation. Communications would be anything like announcements or there may be message boards between you and your classmates. Uh, some classes require that you participate in message boards um, and share your thoughts, share reflections on the work, and that will all show under communications. And then resources will be probably just any additional resources that your instructor um, would like to show you. That could be reading materials or um, additional reading if you're interested in pursuing a topic further. Um, so that's just sort of that additional step. That's really the basics of the D2L. Um, once you get into your classes and you're getting closer to the start of term, um, we do encourage you certainly to open that D2L page, have a look around at the way the class is laid out. It can be a little bit overwhelming at first, taking online classes and seeing you know, all the content displayed before you. Um, but once you start to make your way into the semester and get a little bit more used to the format of things, it'll all become second nature really quickly. 
Now, finally, we would like to point out how to get in touch with your program department. So as a student here at Ryerson, you're going to form a relationship with your academic advisor in your department. So they're here to support you academically. Um, they're there to help you if you're having any issues, potentially building your schedule, making sure your academics are on track, uh, things like that. They're there to help you with that. Uh, they, have, uh, they can assist with course selection, connecting you with supports and services. They offer often orientations, workshops, and other activities to help you make the most of your time at Ryerson. And we do recommend that you start looking out for emails from your program department starting in August. These will be sent to your Ryerson email address, which you can set up by logging into my.ryerson.ca, um, usually in the month of August or at the very end of July. When you log into my.ryerson.ca, you will automatically be prompted to set up a username and to set up an email account. Uh, so it's important that you do log in and you check on that email uh, fairly regularly as the start of term begins because you will be getting more communications from your department, uh, giving you details about different activities and different supports available. We also have the actual list of academic contacts, which is on our contract and directory page. Um, so if you're ever in a pension or you need a little bit of support with your academic planning, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to that academic advisor. They are there to help you during this time. One final thing that I would like to point out, uh, we covered this in our last webinar, but I did just want to mention it again, um, because you are mostly new students joining us here today, is the new students webpage. So we'll just have a quick look at what it looks like. Uh, you can see we've got really covering every topic from academics, student life, financial information, getting your one card, setting up your email address, and other resources as well. And if you continue to scroll down, you'll see we've got any updates about COVID or you know updates along those lines will be posted there as well. And then you can see the different categories that we have available. Um, so you can just click the little plus sign to expand it. Or if you prefer, you can just select open all and that'll open all the information that you need. And it gives you all the information about enrolling, applying for transfer credits, um, accessing academic accommodations, student life, financial things like accessing your RESP, applying for financial aid, paying your fees, and much more. So this is really a fantastic resource for you as a new student. Um, this is going to give you almost like a checklist of all the things that you want to be thinking about and looking at as you prepare for your studies in September. Uh, so if you take anything away from this presentation today, I hope that you will visit our new students webpage and have an explore around and have a look. Um, it can be a little bit of a, a confusing time before things start to ramp up in August and September. And the new students webpage is a great resource to sort of help you get prepared and help you get comfortable with things that are going to be coming down the line over the summer months. Finally, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. We are so glad you could be with us. Uh, we do have social media accounts and um, on those accounts, we post really ongoing updates. We've got timely advice. There might be deadlines coming up that you weren't aware of and we try and stay on top of those and, and let everybody know um, with everything to do with the registrar's office where we like to uh, make that information accessible and uh, really connect with you as well. So please feel free to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Our handle is at RU Service Hub. Um, and we've got lots of fun content coming out. We've got our lovely uh, student ambassadors who work with us here at the Service Hub, but they are students as well. Um, and they post a little bit more about dates and important information to know and a little bit about their experience as students as well. Uh, so please feel free to give us a follow. Uh, we would be happy to connect with you in that way. Again, I will thank you so much for joining us today. I can see we've got quite a few questions coming in. Uh, so I am going to turn off my camera and microphone and help with those questions coming in until we reach four o'clock. Hi, you. Sarah. It's Lori. Oh, yeah. 
we had some questions. I'm just going to turn on my camera. We had some questions that I'm going to ask us to go through live, if you don't mind. And I think you and I can answer them together. So we had a numerous questions about the online versus in-person delivery that's taking place in, at Ryerson in the fall. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of the classes for the upcoming school year, um, the president recently made an announcement stating that uh, and many of you may have read this announcement um, that for the most part, we will still be offering classes in an online format, other than classes that do require specific in-person instruction. Uh, this would be for certain lab classes for maybe um, like a, a science or engineering focused program. Um, certain labs may have in-person component or um, an instructional component for like say a nursing program, something like that. Um, for the most part though, if the class doesn't specifically require an in-person lab, um, there will be an online class offered for your program. Um, there was also a statement that if you're not able to attend in person for the fall term, um, accommodations will be made to ensure that your classes are available online. So as we're still kind of in the recovery phase from this whole COVID thing, um, they are gonna make sure that those, uh, those online resources are available for you. Uh, for the winter term, we may see a broader return to campus in a way that is of course still safe and complying with public health guidelines. Um, so starting in January and moving forward, we may have more in-person classes, but for the fall term at least, starting in September, you can expect to have an online option for most of your classes. Um, I would recommend that you look out for emails from the school and particularly from your program department or faculty over the coming weeks, especially after you've had your Ryerson email address set up. Um, you should be getting some communication about how we're moving forward. So I'd say just make sure to continue checking your email as well. <laughs> 